Hey folks, if your Mac is running low on available storage, then this is the video for you. In this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to clean your Mac by targeting over a dozen different types of junk that tend to accumulate over time. How to clean your Mac, coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hey folks, and welcome to the class. My name is David A. Cox, and my goal with this video is to help you reclaim as much space as possible on your Mac. Before we begin, I strongly encourage you to watch this video from your iPhone or iPad. That way you can more easily follow along on your Mac. I always like it when you can see the before and after results, so do me a favor, open up a new Finder window, then go into the View menu and click here where it says Show Status Bar. Now I'd like you to navigate to your Applications folder, and if you look here at the bottom of this window, you'll see that it now displays the current amount of available storage. Please do me a favor and write down that number. Then when you're done watching this class, let me know in the comments section how much space you got back, as well as which type of file was taking up the most space. Without any further ado, let's begin the class. The first type of junk that we're going to target is potentially located in your home folder. So at this point, I want you to press Command, Shift, and the letter H. What we're looking for in this location are any folders that say iCloud Drive Archive. This issue happens when you enable iCloud Drive and then turn it off. In my experience, 80% of the time, these files are all old versions of your data, but you might want to consider reviewing the contents before you send it to the trash. From here, let's go into the Pictures folder. In this location, we're looking for any old iPhoto libraries that were already migrated to your Photos library, but were never deleted. Now, I realize many people get anxious about deleting old iPhoto libraries out of the fear of losing those photos. If that's the case, consider booking a one-on-one -on -one session with me, and I'd be happy to sit down with you on your computer through Zoom and verify that all of the data has been successfully migrated. The other thing that you may discover in this folder is a second photos library. If you do find one, there is a way to merge multiple photo libraries. However, it requires an app called Power Photos. There is a discount code in the video description, as well as a link to the tutorial that I produced on how to use it. The next type of junk that we're looking for is located in the music folder. So at this point, let's go back to the home folder again by pressing Command Shift H. Now let's go into the music folder. And from here, you may find a folder called iTunes. Double click on that and then go into iTunes Media. The folder that we are looking for in this location is called Mobile Applications. If you do find that folder, you can trash its contents. Remember back in the day when you used to sync everything on your iPhone through iTunes? Well, this is where all of the ancient versions of those apps live, or lived. Anyways, you can delete the data. Next on our list are old podcasts. So let's go into the podcast app, and from here, we want to go to where it says Downloaded. Now you can select any episodes or shows that you don't care about and delete them. Now, if you do discover that you have many old podcasts, you might want to consider taking a moment to go into settings and make some adjustments in terms of how many episodes your computer downloads. For those of you who use Dropbox, this one's for you. One of the things that I hate about Dropbox is that it's constantly trying to back up everything you plug into your Mac, whether it's an external hard drive, SD cards, or your iPhone. The specific folder that we're looking for is called Camera Uploads. If you're already using iCloud to back up your photos, there's no real need for Dropbox to back up the same data. So if you do find a folder called Camera Uploads, go ahead and delete it. And then if you wanna make sure that it doesn't try to back up your iPhone in the future, go into Settings, click on the Sync tab, and uncheck all of these options. Time Machine is still the best way to back up your data, but if you haven't run it in a while, there are local files that can't offload until you plug in your backup drive. So if it has been a while since you allowed Time Machine to run, simply plugging it in and allowing it to do its thing will clear off those files from the local drive. Speaking of backing up, if you're like most people, you probably back up your iOS devices through iCloud, which is good. But one of the things many people forget to do when they buy a new device is that the old backups for your old devices are still taking up space in iCloud. To find out if you have any old backups taking up space in iCloud, go into System Settings and click on your name at the top. Now click on iCloud and then click Manage here at the top. 
In this list on the left, you should see backups. And if you see any devices in this list to the side that have since been retired or replaced, you can delete those backups. The next type of junk we'll target is legacy apps that won't run on your current Mac. For this process, I'm gonna recommend a third-party app, and the good news is it's free. The name of that app is App Cleaner, made by the company Free Mac Soft. To download App Cleaner, I'll post a link in the video description. When you download it, it will initially appear in your downloads folder. Just drag that into your applications folder and double click to launch it. From here, I recommend that you switch it into list view that will display all of the apps on your Mac and anything that you don't use anymore. Or if you see any apps that have a strike appear through them, you can just select them. It will then find all of those little hidden library files. And with one click, you can send all of them to the trash. The next type of junk that we're looking for is also located in the applications folder. Specifically, we're looking for any old installers for past operating systems. Hence, if you see anything in this list that says Mac OS, followed by one of the names of the old operating systems, feel free to drag that file into the trash. Before we continue, I wanna take 30 seconds to tell you about our sponsor, softwarekeep.com. You know what's even better than getting back a ton of space on your Mac? How about saving a little money? If you're one of those people who's still paying an annual subscription for Office 365, but all you actually use is Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, you should know you can get that suite of apps without the annual fee. Just go to softwarekeep.com and click on Office for Mac 2021. Then here in the coupon field, type in promo code TTA20. And just like that, the price will magically drop another 20%. Big thanks to the folks at softwarekeep.com for sponsoring this video. Let's now get back to the class. The next few types of junk that we're gonna target all have to do with photos. And for this process, I am gonna recommend two different apps. One of the frustrating things about the Photos app is that there is no way to sort your library based on file size. And this is where the app Power Photos comes in handy. When I view my photos in Power Photos, I can click on this icon to view it in list mode. At this point, I'm gonna place my cursor here at the top in the toolbar and secondary click. This reveals several extra fields, and for this purpose, let's add size as a field. I'll drag this column over to the side, and now if I click here at the top, I can sort my library by file size. You should know the quick look feature does work when you're in Power Photos. So if you highlight a file and then tap the space bar, it will preview the file. If you want to send it to the trash, just press the keyboard shortcut, Command Delete. You might also want to secondary click in the toolbar and add dimension as a field. That way you can find the largest and smallest images in your library. For this purpose, I recommend that you look at the smallest images and if you find anything around 200 by 300 pixels, Odds are that image is either an icon or more likely a thumbnail. So once again, if you find any of those, just highlight them and then press command delete to send them to the trash. I recently produced a tutorial that deep dives into Power Photos capabilities. If you would like to watch that, the name of that class is Goodbye Junk Photos. I'll put a link to that video in the description. If you're one of those people who takes a lot of photos in camera raw, you might also wanna check out a class that I produced that teaches you how to isolate raw photos that have not been marked as favorites. Then I show you how to convert them into high resolution JPEGs, which take up significantly less space. Once again, link to that video in the video description. The other app that I wanna turn you onto is called Photo Sweeper. I need to be very clear about something. There is one and only one function in Photo Sweeper that I recommend, and that is the ability to find similar photos. So for example, if you're one of those people who takes 10 photos of something, hoping that one will come out, but then never deletes the other nine, this app makes it very easy to clean things up. You can even specify the time delay between shots. So for example, you can scan for photos that were all shot within around 30 seconds of each other. The next few types of junk can all be found by going to the Apple icon at the top left, for those of you who are on macOS Ventura or later, I want you to go into System Settings, then navigate to General, and then click on Storage. For those of you who are on older operating systems, you will go to the Apple icon, click on About This Mac, then click on the Storage tab, and finally click where it says Manage Storage. This menu item can take a minute to populate, so you might need to give it a minute. You remember how earlier I had you search for old backups of old devices that were stored in iCloud? 
Well, these files can also live on the local hard drive. So if in this list you see a menu item that says iOS backups, once again, you can most likely delete that data if it belongs to old devices that have since been replaced. In my experience, about 95% of people never use GarageBand. So another file you can wipe out is the music creation library. Just click the inspector icon and then click remove GarageBand sound library. Plenty of junk also tends to accumulate in the downloads folder. Now, I recently produced a simple tutorial that goes over all the different types of junk that you can eliminate in that location. If you wanna check out that video, I'll include it in the video description. I realize some of you may be tuning in because you've noticed that your Mac has started to slow down. And if that is the case, I'd like to remind you that that can be a symptom of hardware failure. And if that is true, clearing off junk will not make it run faster. Okay, folks, at this point, total up how much free space you got back and let me know what that number is down below in the comment section, as well as what type of junk was taking up the most space. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please be sure to click the like button, or if you'd like to support my channel, please consider clicking the new super thanks button. That allows you to leave a little tip of your choice. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed. <laughs> <laughs>